Now, he's a publicity hound who some claim make a living by peddling hate, but according to his supporters, he's a champion of free speech. British-born American agitator Milo Yiannopoulos has gathered a, a following of critics and fans on his journey to being a notorious internet troll. The lines are blurring between hate speech and free speech. Milo Yiannopoulos has found his calling. A former senior editor for the fringe right American news site Breitbart News, Yiannopoulos was forced to leave after allegedly condoning pedophilia. Some of those relationships between younger boys and older men, the sort of coming of age relationships, the relationships in which those older men have helped those young boys to discover who they are. It's a claim he's denied. His is a career built on divisiveness. He's dismissed concerns about America's college rape culture, calling it a campaign squarely aimed at undermining masculinity. And banned from Twitter for inciting a harassment campaign against African-American actress Leslie Jones. He's called feminism an ugly sociopathic cancer, publicly disparaged a transgender student and supporters of the Black Lives Matter movement. Black Lives Matter doesn't really care about black lives. Um, it's, as we'll discuss shortly, more of a movement for attention, money, and like most activism, more money. He's anti-Muslim, anti-immigration, and fiercely pro-Trump. He denies he's a white nationalist. Recently, he was filmed singing America the Beautiful while the audience gave the Nazi salute. Well, ahead of a controversial speaking tour of Australia later this year, Milo joins us now from Miami. Um, welcome to Sunrise. Good to have you here. Look, I've seen a lot Hi, of... Thank you so much for having me. I've seen a lot of your clips and I can't help but think whether you actually mean half the things that you say and whether you're just trying to get attention. <laughs> Do you actually believe in what you say or are you just, just trying to stir the pot? Well, a lot of people have that reaction. A lot of people have that question. Um, I don't know why it What's should be answer? weird that a... I don't know why it should be weird that a gay guy would be skeptical or fearful of Islam. I don't see, see anything strange about a gay person liking the Bible and liking the First Amendment and liking low taxes. I don't find anything odd about me, really. Um, in order to find me peculiar or strange, or in order to think that perhaps I'm putting it on, you have to sign up to this idea of identity politics, which suggests that just because somebody is black or gay or a woman, they have to have particular political or ideological positions. I reject that idea. Well, I'm um, I, like I don't care whether you're gay or whatever. I'm I'm just saying, you know, some of the things are just so outrageous and the way you put them on thing. Is he like a, a real-life Borat that's just out there to make fun of everyone and well, what, and What and do you think is outrageous? What do you think that I've said is outrageous? Well, Give me something and I, perhaps culture, I can explain it for you've you. You've called rape culture a fantasy. You've likened feminism to cancer. You've said that women on the pill don't look Both right, them. they don't talk right, but you suggest that well, we don't... Well, all those things are true. OK, you said that all you say... All those things are true. Do you really rape believe it, Rape culture on American college campuses... Rape, rape uh, you know, to say that there is a rape culture implies that there is a system or an environment which encourages rape. That doesn't exist on American college campuses. And just to believe in the statistics that feminists peddle, that's one in four, one in five women is going to be sexually assaulted in her time on campus, you'd have to believe that American college campuses have rape rates that approach those of the Congo, where rape is used as a weapon of war. We don't reward rapists in our society. We put them in prison. On the feminism question, women agree with me. Four-fifths of American women do not describe themselves as feminists, and just 7% of British women describe themselves okay. as feminists. I would imagine that Australia, being a very sensible country, would share those views too. It's only journalists who insist on political yes, positions I've, and insist on feminism I've in public. I've Actual people at that. home I've heard agree you with say me. That with, with almost every interview that I saw you, you do. Um, but on well, your statement... Then you should ask different questions, darling. I'm just about to. You've said that, that women on the pill don't look right and don't talk right, but you don't suggest that we replace the pill with anything because you say we need the kids to breed enough to keep the Muslim invaders at bay. Um, I, I'm just not sure why you want to be hurtful rather than just have a reasoned debate. Can't you get the same outcome? I'm or a no, better you can't. outcome? And conservatives have tried for 30 years to be polite, to obey the speech codes of the left. Oh, you shouldn't make jokes about this. You shouldn't hold these positions. If you actually read the column in question, which is titled uh, Birth Control Makes Women Unattractive and Crazy, uh, which uh, Hillary Clinton quoted in, in her uh, campaign speeches, you'll actually find that it's um, a work of satire, but it is based on scientific studies. There are consequences to women's bodies when they're on the contraceptive pill. And to finish off a column saying something about, you know, declining birth rates in the West and increasing birth rates in, in the East is perfectly true. 
true. A lot of the time, you know, the thing that people get upset about more than anything else is inconvenient truths. Things that people don't like you to say is stuff that they kind of know is real, but you're just not supposed to say in polite society. Well, my function in culture, my purpose, if you like, is to say those things that other people either aren't able to or don't feel willing to do, because I want to be a fire starter. I want to blow open the fire doors. I want to, ins uh, you know, to, to, to instigate debate. And other people then can take that wherever they choose. I don't want everyone to be like me, but it's very important that some people are like me in a culture of stultifying okay. political correctness, All where right. people are worried about making the wrong jokes, worried about having the wrong All opinions right. and worried even inciting the wrong studies. Okay. okay, well, you're touring later this year. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Milo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I rest my case from the very first question.